Welcome to Vital MTB's 2022 Downhill Bike Test Session. In this video, we will discuss the performance of Nukeproof's Descent 29. To read the full review, head to vitalmtb.com. Nukeproof bikes have an illustrious heritage between the tape, from their carbon and titanium frames in the 90s, to producing bikes that have stood atop multiple World Cup and Enduro World Series podiums throughout the last decade. Launched in 2019, the Descent replaced Nukeproof's long-standing Pulse downhill bike and introduced an updated frame design. Initially developed to test multiple suspension kinematics at once, the production version of the Descent features a flip chip in the main pivot that adjusts shock progression. Four leverage rate positions are available, ranging from 17 to 30% progression. Changing between positions does not affect geometry or travel, and Nukeproof says that variations in sag are less than 1%, meaning riders generally won't need to adjust spring rate. Since our testing period was limited to four days between three riders at a single bike park, we only rode in the stock position two that offers a 21% progressive rate. The Descent also offers riders three chainstay length options via interchangeable dropout inserts. We tested the Descent 2.9 that, surprise surprise, rolls on 29 inch wheels with 190 millimeters of rear wheel travel. Nukeproof also offers a Descent with dual 27 half inch wheels or a mixed wheel configuration, both of which have 200 millimeters of travel. All models feature internal cable routing, enduro bearings in all pivots, 1.5 inch head tubes, custom tuned shocks, and 3D contoured frame protection on the down tube and chainstay. Based on Nukeproof's recommended sizing for our test riders ranging from 5'10 to 6'2, we tested an extra large with a 480mm reach, 445mm chainstay length, 631mm stack height, and 63 degree head tube angle. As the only extra large bike in the group, the Descent 29 did have the longest reach but paired it with the shortest stack. The Descent 29 is available in two build options or as a frame and shock only. We tested the most expensive RS model that retails for $6,499 US dollars, highlighted by a RockShox Boxer Ultimate Fork, RockShox Super Deluxe Ultimate Coil Shock, SRAM X01 7-speed drivetrain with carbon cranks, SRAM Code R brakes, Nukeproof Horizon Cockpit, and Nukeproof Horizon V2 aluminum wheels with 2.4-inch Michelin DH22 tires. Compared to the other bikes in the test, the Descent shared the most similarities with the Propane Rage CF using the same RockShox suspension and SRAM drivetrain. However, the Rage used Code RSC brakes which offer an additional pad contact adjustment over the Code R model. So, how did the Descent perform? In true test session fashion, we wrangled together three testers to gain a diverse impression of each bike. We then set up camp at Mountain Creek Bike Park in Vernon, New Jersey. Situated only an hour from New York City, Mountain Creek is best known for its impressed variety of trails and short gondola ride. The mountain offers a mix of rough technical rock gardens, high-speed chunder, steep rock rolls, and flowy jump trails with ripping berms. With the ability to knock out multiple laps per hour and accommodations conveniently located at the base, Mountain Creek served as the perfect location to test this year's bikes. With a tight timeline to shake down four downhill bikes, our goal was to find out where each bike excelled or fell short, what nuances set each apart, and ultimately help riders understand which bike would be best for them. The next bike I rode was a Nukeproof Descent. Uh, overall, I really like the aesthetic of that bike. It has nice lines, it kind of reminds me of an old school race bike, and it just looks like it's going fast standing still. Um, my first impressions on the bike were, that's my m most favorite bike to hit corners with. It was the only bike that I really felt confident where I could push the bottom bracket really hard. So overall the suspension is a, a, a touchy subject for me, I guess. I've been on Fox for so long, so I was excited to try the new Boxer. And I can't say I, I loved it or that I was overly impressed. Setup is really easy with it, but I found that it seemed to get really overwhelmed if you were like landing into braking bumps on the brakes. They, it seemed to want to dive or flex back at me. Um, the rear shock felt fine. Um, not perfect, but pretty good overall. Um, but I definitely found that the boxer just didn't give me the stiffness in the chassis or the, the holdup that I was accustomed to with a different brand. The tire spec on the new proof were the Michelin 22s and I was a little skeptical at first because they have pretty tall knobs and almost look like a mud tire. Uh, I was worried that the, the side knobs maybe would deflect or be skittish on loose over hard stuff. But as I got comfortable on those tires, those are actually really confidence inspiring. 
it felt like when the side knobs would fold, it was a predictable fold. It didn't sort of feel skittish or dance around on me. Um, the one backdrop to those tires, I found that they rolled really slow. Pretty consistently on the bike park runs, the nuke proof would definitely be slower on the straightaways um, if you're trying to pump jump runs and things like that. But for me, I, would, I was able to make up any gap that the boys pulled on me in the corners just because I felt so confident cornering it. The bottom line on the nuke proof is that I would say it's probably for a racer. It definitely is targeting racing. It's a long bike, it's a stable bike. And with a little bit more tuning, I think it would be a really fast bike. So bottom line is if you're a racer, you don't want to go carbon, that would be the bike I'd recommend. So Nuke Proof's Descent 2.9 was, after spending more time on it, after our first day, what turned out to be probably my favorite bike in the test. With my background of racing a lot, I definitely tend to lean towards bikes that are gonna provide the most stability, are gonna be the most confidence inspiring as I start to push my limits, um, go faster. The bike was probably the easiest for me to just kind of hold on and let it like let it do its thing and work for me. Um, the only kind of downside that, to that for me was that once I would pick a line and kind of choose the direction I was going through a section, I was pretty much stuck with where I was gonna be. I had more trouble with that bike kind of getting it out of a line and quickly moving it into another one. Um, that's kind of a pro and a con, maybe depending on how you ride. For me, more, more often than not, I enjoyed it. It, made, it meant that I could go into sections charging and I could trust the bike to you know, keep up with what was happening, um, maintain speed, and not get me in a situation that I felt like I was you know, riding over my head. I found the Nuke Proof was incredible to corner on. Um, it maybe wasn't the type of bike that I would choose to go inside and just blow up a corner and roost it, but for you know a mix of say flat corners on like a downhill track, um, or in, especially on like really fast, high speed, long bike park corners, I could just set into like a turning angle and know that that bike was just gonna carry the same line all the way through. It wasn't gonna deflect or do anything weird. It definitely, I think where my body fell on that bike, especially, uh, you know, promoted pushing it harder in corners, knowing that it wasn't gonna do anything weird. So what's the bottom line on Nuke Proof's Descent downhill bike? I would say that that's a great option for somebody who wants to go racing and be competitive, and maybe you don't have support, and you're gonna go buy a bike at full pop. It's the build that we tested was very capable to be competitive in a race environment. It's definitely not my first choice for a bike if I was, you know, living somewhere that I have mostly flow or jump trails as it, you know, it takes a little bit more energy to move around. But, you know, I could see myself if I wanted to get back into racing, say next summer, heavily considering the Nuke Proof as, you know, a potential contender to go racing with. So the Nuke Proof Descent 2.9, um, that's my baby. That's the bike that I picked to race. And now kind of, kind of that we're not playing the kind of the mind game strategy on what we're gonna race. Um, that's the bike that I picked to ride before the test session started. The Nuke Proof Descent, I think on paper, is solid for a privateer race bike. Um, what really stood out to me on that bike is how solid the chassis felt to me. So I would pick that bike up and kind of place it sideways or whatever, and it would, for the most part, just solidly plant itself on the ground. And that's a really good quality because that shows the lateral stiffness and the tightness and tolerances on, on the pivots, um, which is really important when you're trying to ride a bike fast. One thing that stood out on the Nuke Proof that we were all puzzled by is, is the brakes. So they, they, they spec'd a Code R brake, which for some reason doesn't make sense with the XO drivetrain, but that was the standout lowest performing piece of that bike. Also, I had a moment on the race course and I kind of tuckled the rear wheel um, so, you know, that happens a lot, as I hear here in Mountain Creek, the, the, the rocks are really sharp, so we can't really fault that wheel too much, but it did fail on us, so it's worth mentioning. So the, the new proof, really, if I was to summarize it, it would be confidence, confidence inspiring. Um, I felt super confident on that bike, diving into the tree sections off of a ski run, into the rocks, into the roots. It held the line really well. Um, long, fast, sweeping bike park turns. I can 
pretty much just spot my line and it would go there and stick to that line um, with without feeling like it wanted to deflect or if it was going to take me somewhere else. Very predictable, very confidence inspiring, especially at speed. After the first day of riding the Nuke Proof, I shortened up the chain stays, I actually put it in the short position. That really brought the bike alive. I think with the, with the short chain stays, it made me uh, realize that I can place that bike where I wanted it a little bit easier. Um, and then just kind of with you know the rigidity of the frame, how solid it felt, how confidence inspiring the geometry was in general, that made for the, the perfect combination for me for this test session. Bottom line on the new proof Descent 29, it's a, it's a true to the name privateer race bike. It's good for anyone from beginner to cat one or domestic pro. Um, the bike is also really, really good on bike park type features, uh, berms, wall rides, braking bumps, jumps, you name it. It's still handled them just as good as at any other bike. Um, but just, you know, with that racing pedigree behind it. For more in-depth analysis of Nuke Proof's Descent 29, please head to vitalmtb.com for the complete review. To check out our entire downhill bike test session, click the link at the end of this video. And make sure to add Mountain Creek to your list of must-visit bike parks. You won't be disappointed. Thanks for watching.